Hi everyone, this is Elise here at Plan with Elise, and today I am answering your questions. So last week I put a box up on Instagram, on my Instagram stories, if to see if you had any questions for me, and if there were enough questions, I figured I would do a Q&A video. So here we are, there were plenty of questions. Um, the first question was, is, am I applying for the Happy Planner Squad? Yes, I applied already. Um, Last year I made my video public, I chose to not do that this year, but my application is in, so good luck to anyone who is choosing to apply this year. Okay, I have my list on my phone, that was just one of them, <laughs> All right? Was I scared to start a YouTube channel? So it took me a really long time to start a YouTube channel for a couple of reasons. First of all, I felt that there were so many people making amazing YouTube videos and that those who watch videos only have certain amount of hours in their day to watch them, right? So it was a lot of self-doubt and I was thinking, well, why would someone watch my videos when there's plenty, you know, to watch? Do I have anything to contribute and do I even have anything to add in terms of what is already out there on YouTube? What I quickly learned though, after starting my channel was that I do have something to add. We all do. We all have a different, unique way of planning, creating, um, organizing our lives, our budget, our planners, all of that kind of stuff. And so that fear went away pretty quickly because I realized that, um, of course, I do have something to contribute, like I said, we all do. So there are times that, you know, before I sit down and, and make a video, I'm still like a tiny bit nervous because I just don't know how it's going to come out, right? Like I may have an idea, okay, I'm going to use these sticker books or I'm going to decorate in these colors and I just have no idea how it's going to look. If I'm plan, if I'm, if I'm planning, <laughs> If I'm filming a flip through, that I'm not nervous about because I'm just showing you what it is. But when you're sitting down and creating something, I think that sometimes those butterflies still always come in. But the more videos I film and the more I become comfortable with the uncomfortable, it stops, it stops being, being scary. Um, how far in advance do I make my spreads? So it really varies. I try try to be five to seven days out, meaning if today is Sunday, my hope is that my videos are scheduled five days out. So when you ask how far in advance I make my spreads, that always corresponds to my videos because there aren't any spreads that I do that aren't on YouTube. Um, sometimes, of course, there's times that life is just busy and so I don't always have the opportunity to film as far ahead as I can. So, or as I'd like to. Um, so in those cases, you know, I find, I, I make sure I find the time. I really try to use my planners to plan my planning, if that makes sense. Um, so in terms of decorating my spreads, five to seven days when I can. In terms of writing in them each morning and if I can each night. So I really don't, if you've watched an after the pen video of mine, on Monday, I'm typically not going to write Friday's plans. Plans change all the time. My plans seem to change hourly. And so like, for example, if you watched my classic spread for this week, that video, I was talking about going into the city on, into New York City on Saturday to celebrate my birthday and all this kind of stuff. And I did like this whole area in my planner for that. That plan changed. So I'm still going to be celebrating my birthday with this friend, but it's not going to be on Saturday. It's going to be on Friday. And so I don't know if I'm going to move those stickers or draw an arrow or something like that. I'm also not going into New York City anymore. She's coming back out to New Jersey. So I don't plan in terms of writing much further out than like the day of, if even that. Okay. Um, next up, what is, these aren't in any order. I didn't categorize them. What is one mistake that I've made that you can learn from in planning or budgeting? Okay, planning first, thinking that you need to buy all the things. When I first started planning, I bought all the things and um, I didn't need to. Now, clearly I have a lot of things. This is over three years of planning, but um, there's also a lot more that exists now. Like if you are just starting out and today is your first day discovering happy planning, there's probably double the amount of sticker books than there were three years ago because they used to not come out with so many new ones each year, I don't think. And now there are more releases, more products, more Be Happy boxes, all of that. So 
Um, now what I do is I really only purchase what I like. If there's a release and there are 20, new, well, not 20, 10 new sticker books, I may only get two or three of them. And sometimes I may wait until they go on sale at a store or something like that because um, I only want to spend my money on what I know I'm going to use. You know, I've made the mistake in the past of buying everything to have it. And now I have sticker books that are years old that I really haven't used at all. A mistake that I made in terms of budgeting. Well, first of all, not having a budget. <laughs> that was a big mistake that I originally made. But once I started budgeting, I think um, not being realistic with my budget. So how do I explain this? If, um, if you have a family of four, you probably need to figure out a realistic grocery budget. So my grocery budget, I talk about this often, is $50. There's my wife is $50 a week. Sometimes I go under and sometimes I go over. But what I do when I go under is I hold all of that in an envelope so that when a time comes that I go over, I have that prepared. Um, you can't feed four on $50 a week. You probably can't even feed two on $50 a week. And so being realistic and understanding where how your budget applies to your individual circumstance, whether you're an individual, a couple, whether you have kids, anything like that, just being realistic with that is probably a mistake that I made originally um, because I only accounted for my bills um, that includes like rent, utilities, you know, car, all of that, health insurance. I accounted for food. I accounted for um, savings, retirement, sinking funds, things like that. I forgot to account for fun. And I call it fun instead of entertainment because I don't know, entertainment kind of feels like an outdated word. <laughs> Fun for me may be going out to dinner with a friend. Um, so that's not really a food budget. That's a fun budget because it's things that I'm doing to enjoy my life. If you do a lot of restaurant dining, then you may want a restaurant budget. I don't have one because I don't go out to, even like before COVID, I just don't go to restaurants enough to need that kind of line item in my budget. So for me, it's more fun than anything else, if that makes sense. I had to turn... My camera a little bit if you've seen my what is this like my office space tour this is technically the dining room of the apartments not my apartment because I don't have a dining room so my dining room light is like right above me and sometimes what happens is like it casts this weird shadow and makes it look like I have a black eye so we're just gonna go with it but no I don't have a black eye <laughs> all right the next question is why did I start budgeting um, I think it's twofold number one I had a lot of debt and it went to collections and I had to pay it. And the only way to be able to pay it in increments was to budget. Um, and so I had to learn how to budget. The other part of it was that it also kind of came at a really good time because I was really sick of checking my bank account, wondering if I was going to have enough money to pay my bills because I wasn't budgeting at all. I was spending and then a bill would come and it'd be like, okay, do I have enough money to pay it? Yes. And then I would, you know, or no, and try to figure out what to do with that. Um, so I just had no budget and I, I had to. Um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain because I almost don't remember what it was like to live without a budget, except for like, I can picture sitting in my old apartment like checking my phone, uh, checking my bank account on my phone and like trying to figure out, okay, if I have these many paydays left, before this bill is due, am I going to have enough money? Okay, I can't spend more than this that week. And I guess technically that was the first step of budgeting. Um, but I think that a budget is necessary. I think that unless you have, you know, an unlimited amount of income and maybe no bills or you make m tons more money, you're bringing in tons more money than you're spending. I mean, technically that's a budget too, but I think that's a confusing answer. So anyway, the two reasons <laughs> to summarize are um, because I had to and because I wanted to just feel better and not be worried about money all the time and not be worried about bills that were coming in and things like that and just be confident that when a bill came I could pay it and I wouldn't be concerned. Um, do I prep all of my planners on one day and schedule them on YouTube on different days? I don't prep them all in one day. I prep them in several days. So the day that today that this video is being filmed, I've done five videos. This is the fifth. So four of them, of course, were planned with me's. 
Uh, sometimes I do one video a day, sometimes I do two or three, and sometimes I don't do any. Um, it really just depends on my schedule, but I definitely don't film, like, tomorrow's video has been scheduled for, well, tomorrow, I'm sorry, it's confusing. Okay, this video is going up on Wednesday evening. This should be going up on Wednesday evening. Wednesday's my birthday. Um, the videos that are around that. So earlier in the week, later in the week, and I think Wednesday through like Sunday is already up on YouTube and it's already scheduled. So my videos go up at 10 p.m. Eastern. And like I said earlier in this video, I try to do them five to seven days out, you know, when I can. The day that I'm filming this, my videos are currently scheduled for, except for this video, for one week out. So through the following Sunday. So now I know that the next video I go to film, the next plan with me, is going to be for Monday the 19th of July. I was just looking at my calendar. The 19th of July because I'm scheduled through July 18th. I also typically film them in chronological order um, because if something comes up and I'm not able to film, I want to know that I'm at least scheduled in chronological order, if that makes sense. So like I said, the next video I need to film will be my big plan with me for the week of the 18th. The video after that that I'll film is whatever video is going to be that next day, and then so on and so forth. So that's kind of how my, my filming schedule goes. Um, how long have I been happy planning? Since April of 2018. So I found Happy Planner in April of 2018. I was stressed and needed some creative outlet. Growing up, my mom and I always went to craft stores and we always did crafty things together. And I was like touching my hands because I needed to do something with my hands. Um, I work on a computer as many do and some don't. And I needed to do something that felt creative but with my hands and it wasn't technology based. So I went to Michael's and I saw planning. I saw happy planning. I was like, well, wait a second. I can craft, but also be productive. Like this isn't just like buying um, what's something my mom and I did. We had one summer where we made a lot of candles and I love candles and I loved candle making and not that there's anything wrong with going and buying candles because I think it would be really fun to do that again. But at least I knew this was going to be a hobby that for me, I it would be productive for me. So that's so that was April of 2018. I think in May of 2018, I um, started my Instagram account. And then in J June, June, yeah, of 2020, my YouTube channel. Um, tips for working by yourself. Uh, tips for living and working by yourself. Okay, so I've had a work from home job since, for almost two years, actually, before, um, before the pandemic, my company closed down. Maybe we closed down the office maybe six months before. So I've been working from home for a long time. One of the things that helps in terms of my productivity, I mean, my job is very fast paced. Um, there's really no downtime. So of course, having demands and things that I have to do help me be productive work-wise, but also everything that I do at work is time tracked. It's not an individual thing. It didn't, I mean, it's not like a me thing. It didn't start because we were working from home. I work in a type of industry where a client buys time and we work towards that time. And so my work is time tracked so we can figure out, it's sort of like, a, not, I'm not a lawyer, but it's kind of like how lawyers have billable hours. Um, the work that I do is typically billable. And so I use a timer. Um, everyone in my company uses a timer. So I know how much time at the end of the day or at the end of the week I've tracked. Um, if you don't have a time tracking thing and you're looking for a way to help you be more productive, I recommend looking up the Pomodoro technique. I think that there's like a Chrome extension where it's a certain amount of focus time, like heavy focus time, and then it'll like ding or whatever sound it makes and then kind of a little bit of a break and then a ding again. And so you can focus, 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 and then have a break and then do that again. So it's kind of like blocked out for you. Um, in terms of spending a lot of time by yourself, I've picked up other ways to occupy my time. So YouTube is a big one. YouTube takes a lot of time. Um, so that takes up a decent amount. 
I recently started running again. Well, not again. I have never been a runner, but I recently started running. Um, I've also picked up reading again for the first time in, I don't know, maybe a decade. Um, I think it's really important to write down things that you can do, whether they be outside or inside or people you can call or things that you can do to catch up with others. Like I have a big family. And so I'll think like, all right, which aunt or uncle or cousin haven't I spoken to in a while? What friend haven't I spoken to in a while? And I'll give them a call. Um, you know, what area of my apartment can I clean? Um, do I need to reorganize my shirts? Like just things like that, where if you're stirring a little bit and feeling like you need to do something to occupy that time, I definitely recommend figuring out um, a hobby that may work. So for me, it's YouTube which isn't as much a hobby anymore. It's still a hobby, but it's also a job um, for me running or exercising and reading. And then again, just like being social um, over the phone, because of course you can't always have the opportunity to be social in person. Okay, why did I make a YouTube channel? I wanted to, I, <laughs> I kind of touched on it early on, but why did I make one? I don't know if there was any real specific reason. Um, part of when I started it was shortly after I moved in with someone I used to live with and I had a lot of extra free time because I wasn't spending time driving between my home and his anymore. Um, I felt ready. I started my YouTube channel a few weeks after last year's squad was announced and I didn't make it. And I didn't start my YouTube channel by any means to make the next squad, but it felt like a natural next step for me in terms of plan with Elise and where that was all going. So I think I decided one day I wanted to have a YouTube channel. I bought a couple pieces of equipment. They were delivered through Amazon the next day or two days later. And then I just did a plan with me and then just kind of continued doing them and never really looked back and never, um, never regretted it. Am I training for a specific 5k event? Uh, no, I, I'm doing the program called couch to 5k, which is just meant to help build up your like stamina and strength in terms of being able to run. Um, for me, I'm just trying to be better than I was yesterday. So it's been really rainy and humid for the last few days here. So I haven't um, run. So I'm guessing the next time I do, we'll probably my numbers probably won't be as good as they were a week ago, but I wanted to find an exercise that I enjoyed. And this is one that I actually am enjoying because I find it really doable. Um, it's 30 minutes and it's like a five minute walk to start, a five minute walk to end, and then like increments of 90 seconds or two minutes of walking and jogging. Not like running fast, but walking and jogging in between. Do I find planning on camera stressful? Sometimes, if it's a spread that's not working out, then yes. Um, but it's not like, I don't want to say it's not real stress because what you're feeling might be real stress, but it's not the kind of stress that I might feel if I'm going through a challenging time or it's not the kind of stress that I might feel at my job or it's not the kind of stress that I've felt financially in the past. It's just like, oh, I got I to gotta make this work. And I know that if it doesn't, um, what's the worst that'll happen, right? Like I'll get a lot of thumbs downs on videos. Sometimes that already happens anyway. Um, so yes, somewhat stressful sometimes, but not the kind of stress that, that I let affect me very much. Okay, how many hours a week do I spend on planner spreads and planning? Let's try to do some math here. So if I put out seven videos a week and the average one is 20 minutes, that's a little bit over two hours, I'm going to double it in terms of uploading, editing, writing descriptions, taking photos, getting them scheduled on YouTube. So it's four hours, but that's probably not accurate. I'm sure it's more than four hours when I just even think about how long I've been doing it today. Um, there's a question was planning on planner spreads and planning. Okay. 
let's say that I spend six hours a week on creating for YouTube, then I probably spend another two hours a week in my planners. If I spend a little bit of time in the morning and a little bit of time at night in each of my planners. So what did I say I was at? I forgot. It's under 10. 10 sounds like a lot, but it's pro I'd say it's under 10. I said, okay, six hours for YouTube and two hours for planning. Maybe add in another hour for Instagram. Um, so we're still under under 10 hours. It might vary week to week, but but it's not, I don't wanna say it's not a ton, I guess it's just depends on what you consider a lot of hours. Um, will I launch a Patreon group? Not today. Um, I don't really have an opinion on it either way. I know that for my friends who have Patreon accounts, uh, it's really beneficial for them and it's really beneficial for the patrons who support them. I'm a patron of three accounts and I really find it very valuable and useful. Um, so maybe one day, if it's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments, but, uh, but not today. Have I ever used an entire sticker book? No, nope. The closest I've come is probably Colorful Boxes, the original Colorful Boxes. Um, and Womankind, I've used a lot of Womankind stickers, but I've never used an entire sticker book. Best planner advice. I think again, not buying all of the things um, and also making sure that your planner works for you. I think that there was a time in my life where I wasn't writing everything down in my planner because I was thinking, well, what if I want to take a photo of this for social media and I don't want to share that information. Um, but in that case, I probably wasn't being true to myself and my planner. So if that situation were to come up now, if I wanted to write something in my planner today that I didn't want to go on social media, I would either not take a photo of it I might cover it up with like a pen or a prop or something, or I might use an app to um, like smudge out the confidential information. So I guess that would be my tip in terms of planning and social media combined. Planning on its own is figure out what kind of layout works for you, whether it's a vertical, a dashboard, a horizontal, and a block layout. You know, try a couple, but try them not by buying them. <laughs> try them by sort of drawing out or you can even find templates online and figure out what kind of system works for you. Our brains all function super differently. And so a layout that may work for me for a specific area of my life may not work uh, for you. Best life advice. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about this one a lot. I don't know why I look surprised. Versus best, instead of best life advice, I want to kind of change it to the best thing I've learned, I guess, sort of life advice, um, is it's knowing the difference between the things you can control and the things you can't, and accepting the things that you can't control, and letting them go. The year, what year was it? 2020, my word of the year was release. And it ended up being a really great word for me because I, I just continued to remind myself of that. I had a keychain with the word on it. I had a bracelet with the word on it and would just be like, let, let it go, Elise, let it go. And letting go of things, letting go of people, just letting go of the, of the things that I couldn't control. Um, and taking control of the things that I could, you know, life happens and we do have control over, you know, a decent amount of it. And so having the strength to focus on those things that you want to be able to control is really important. And I, I wasn't always that way. I felt that early in my 20s, I used to kind of let things happen um, instead of making things happen. And now, of course, there are things that I do have to let happen because they're out of my control but there's plenty that I can make happen because, you know, I, I, I write my life. What I do in this next moment, in this next hour, in this next week and month is up to me. However, if we want to talk about things we can't control, right? Like I applied for happy planner squad. That's, you know, coming up in the next month or so in terms of announcements and all of that. 
And so I can control my application. I can control what I write down. I can control my video. I can control whether it's public or unlisted. I cannot control whether or not I make the squad. And so knowing the difference between those two things is really, really important. Um, so I think that's the biggest lesson that I've learned. And yeah. Okay, so I think those were all the questions. Let me see. Just scan through them again. Um, yeah, those are, those are all the questions. So I know that that was on Instagram and not on YouTube. If you end up having questions that I haven't answered, shoot them down below in the comments because maybe we will do a part two of this from questions from YouTube separately from the ones that uh, came in through Instagram. So if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please do take a moment to like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.